The Coriolis acceleration is given by 2 omega cross v, where omega is the angular velocity and v is the radial velocity. But where does the equation come from? Um, in this video, I'm going to derive this equation with vector analysis. First of all, what is it? The Coriolis acceleration can be defined as the acceleration experienced or observed by objects which are moving relative to a rotating reference frame. Just before we go on, I want to mention I won't be using the standard vector hat notation. I tried to keep the notation as simple as possible. We just need to remind ourselves that the velocities and accelerations are vectors. It's not going to affect any calculations, and I promise, I'll replace the hat on the vectors at the end of the video. For a simple example which can demonstrate this, let's look at an arm fixed at the origin O and rotating with a constant angular velocity omega. O is connected to ground and considered stationary. On the arm is a slider, which is moving with a constant radial velocity away from the center. It is the angular velocity in combination with the radial velocity which gives rise to the Coriolis acceleration. As stated in the equation, it is a cross product indicating that the direction of the Coriolis acceleration acts 90 degrees to the radial velocity. Finally, we need to remind ourselves that the slider also has a tangential velocity and a centripetal acceleration, as with all other rotating objects. Using polar coordinates, it's possible to see the path taken by the slider. The path is curved, and in order for the slider to trace this path, it must have experienced an acceleration. We can plot the direction of the Coriolis acceleration at each point, along with the centripetal acceleration, and finally, the net acceleration. If the radial velocity was reversed, and the slider was moving from the end of the arm toward the center, then the direction of the Coriolis acceleration would also be reversed. As we can see, the slider is useful for modeling the Coriolis acceleration. But before we tackle any analysis, let's revise what causes an acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over change in time. In the case of an object moving along a straight line, the change in velocity, or delta v, is the difference between the object's velocity at point 1 and point 2. Delta v can also be represented visually as the difference in velocity vectors at point 1 and 2. Now let's consider an object moving along a curved path with a constant speed. As the object moves, its velocity vector changes direction. By analysing the velocity vectors before and after, it is poss possible to derive the equation for centripetal acceleration. In both cases, delta v indicates that the object has accelerated. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of delta v. Using these principles to analyze acceleration, let's refer back to the rotating arm and slider. The slider has two velocities, a tangential velocity at right angles to the arm and a radial velocity in line with the arm. The slider moves from point 1 to point 2 in a small time increment delta t. During delta t, the radius of the slider has increased by delta r and the arm has rotated through delta theta. The two components of the slider's velocity will be changing in three ways. Firstly, the direction of the tangential velocity is changing. This gives rise to centripetal acceleration. Since the focus of our video is a Coriolis acceleration, we need only be aware of this. Secondly, the tangential velocity of the slider increases as the radius of the slider increases by delta r. In other words, the magnitude of the tangential velocity has increased. And the third, the angle of the radial velocity of the slider has changed by delta theta.
Note that the radial speed has remained constant, however the velocity has changed direction. Let's examine the change in tangential velocity, or delta v subtangential. We will assume the direction of the vectors at points 1 and 2 are parallel for a small angle delta theta. The change in the tangential velocity will be the difference in the length of the vectors. The length of the tangential velocity vector at point 1 is given by omega by r1. Similarly, at point 2, the tangential velocity vector will be omega by r2. The slider moves a distance from r1 to r2, which we call delta r. It does so with a constant radial velocity, or v subradial. Using these, we can find delta t. We now have all the information we need to obtain the acceleration. After substituting the equations, we arrive at an acceleration which is equal to omega by the radial velocity. This acceleration is in the tangential direction. Now let's turn our attention to the radial velocity vector. As shown, the magnitude of the vector doesn't change. The direction changes by a small angle delta theta, which is equal to omega by delta t. Since delta theta is very small, we can approximate the change in velocity delta v as an arc length, which is equal to delta theta times the radial velocity. Substituting the equations once again, we arrive at the following result. With the acceleration equal to omega by the radial velocity. And the acceleration is once again in the tangential direction. Since both derived accelerations are pointing in the same direction, they have a cumulative effect and their vectors can be added together. This results in a single expression, a equal to 2 by omega by the radial velocity we have arrived at the Coriolis acceleration. Thanks for watching and I hope you have enjoyed the video.